Okay, well, at the end of the Deep River trip. Um, and we thought it looked pretty cool. It's called the Numban Cliffside Caravan Stuff Rest Over up. or something, isn't it? Yeah. Rest Up. Um, and you camp sort of up high and you can see out to the cliffs and a bit of a view and the sun is just setting as we come in here now. And it is a pretty spectacular sight. So we're just going to find somewhere to pull up for the night and just enjoy the views and yeah, should be cool. We made it back to Kununurra and we're here at Diversion Dam. Checking out the sites. Kate's checking out the history. So that's the road that you go on to go into Kununurra. Yeah, they've obviously redone all this sort of area. It looks really nice. You can go down there for a bit and load a boat. If you've got a boat, if you're a lucky bugger that's got one. Because you can't fish in it, swim, or boat in this little section here. But further down there you can, there's a boat ramp. Which is pretty cool, but anyway, so yeah, we've uh, made it back to Kununurra. We were only here about a month or so ago when we finished the Gibbs, so we're not staying long here. We're just um, passing through, getting some fuel and stuff like that. Then we're heading to Lake Argyle and we'll stay there for a few nights. And then shooting over the border, hopefully. Diversion Dam is basically a series of big gates that just allows water to kind of flow through at a slower speed um, throughout the dry season so is that in the wet season they can catch it at the top not allow it all to go flowing through but they're just slowly letting it flow through now so that the river systems down below stay full of water and allow farmers to um, feed their crops and cattle and um, lots of horticultural and crop, um, forestry and stuff goes on down there. So it means that there's water available all year round. So this basically keeps the water in the systems up the top. And I imagine Lake Argyle is the main holding area for it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, this just keeps the water there and lets it trickle through all year round. So there's water all year round. Very cool. In, in the short, really, is the way of saying it. That's what all those signs said, pretty much, is the abridged version. So we've made it through to Lake Argyle and we're staying at the Lake Argyle Caravan Park for the next three nights. Um, it's an interesting setup when you get here. Uh, you come to the parking attender and then they'll show you through to a site if you've booked a site. If you haven't booked a site, they'll let you know if there's one available. If there's not, then you park up and wait basically until there's one available. It's, what is it, middle of September at the moment. Um, so it's not really too hard to get a site. You might have to go and unpowered for a little bit and then they'll put you into a powered when one becomes available, might be the next morning. Um, but in the peak season, we actually came through here when we came through at the end of the Gibb River Road and there were heaps of caravans parked up like overnight to wait to get spots the next day. And they'd rocked up at like, you know, eight, 10 o'clock in the morning. So between eight and 10. So yeah, good time to come, I think. Although it was hot. So we're off to the pool. Yay for the now pool. Check out the infinity pool. Let's do it. Let's do it. So today we're going to go out on one of the barbecue pontoon boats that you can hire from Lake Argyle. Um, so we're doing a lunchtime one, so it's like 1 o'clock till 5 o'clock I think, you get about 4 hours. Um, so yeah, we're just going to muck around by the pool this morning and then we'll go shoot out on the boat, do a bit of an explore and cook up a feed. So we're going to have just uh, sausage sizzle and that sort of stuff, so nothing flash. But yeah, it should be good. 
trying to find crocodiles. We haven't yet, so we're just... Um, we can't remember where crocodile cove is. Yeah, it's around here somewhere. Um, so we're just gonna park up and we're having some sausage sizzle. So we've got the snags on the barbie, looking the goods. And yeah, so it's a pretty good little uh, little setup we got here. Alright, ready for snags. Oh, look at that production line. That's just what I'm having. What are you guys having? Yeah. We'll probably eat it though. Does everybody want onion? Yeah, do you all get that? I didn't hear any of that. I want some onion. Does anybody not want onion? You don't want onion? The struggle is real, people. The struggle is real. Either way, it looks good. Pretty nice little scenery here to be in. Go, Asta! Go, Asta! Three, two, one. Oh my god! Uh, Alright, so. Oh my god, I feel like Time to weigh anchor. Oh See you guys. I'm out of here. Hi. Oh, okay. Oh, I better get, better not. All right. Time to ride the horse. <laughs> oh, so nice. Yep, the boats are rocking. Wow. So nice out here. So nice. Oh no. It's hard to stand on these things. Ride them like a horse. Impossible. <laughs> Alright, so we came here, what, about two months ago? Yeah. And did the cruise out here. I probably, I know, might put a little bit of footage up on there. After we were finished the Gibb River Road. Yeah, so and we thought, well, we definitely got to come back here because it was um, really good and we were only, we didn't even stay here, we just stayed in Kununurra and did a day trip out here. So that's why we're out here, we're out here for three nights and it's worth it, it's really good. Yeah, it is really cool. Caravan Park's really cool, it's got an awesome pub as well um, and they do really good meals, live music, all that sort of stuff. And we went there already. Yeah, we have, haven't we? And we saw a dude play a full set and it was really good. Yeah. We had a good time, but then the only thing was we had to drive. Uh, 45 minutes back to Kununurra, so that was, wasn't the best, but anyway. We're here now, we're going to enjoy it. It's definitely very beautiful though. Yeah, I recommend it getting out on the water, like on your own, not in a cruise if you can. So like hiring a barbecue boat, or you can just hire like a little tinny or something. Just get out so you can just do what you want, put her around, look at what you want to. It's pretty cool. Hey kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you yeah. Kind of, you can it's... fish off the boats as well, like we could have brought fishing gear and fished off the boat, but we don't have a um, fisheries license. For WA and because we're about to drive out of WA in two days time we just thought we'd just let it go for this just in case we're not back within the year yeah and like we are but we'll and I think the way that we fish Astra will probably catch the only thing anyway so it doesn't really matter well you caught three flathead a few days ago <laughs> yeah we did pretty good there but anyway so Lake Argyle get amongst it it's good I don't know what my horse is gonna be named <laughs> and you can ride horses in the water that's pretty <laughs> awesome too and underneath us, like under all the water, it's a forest, like the mountains, but they've just made it. And it's it is, because it's a uh, man-made lake. There's a fair bit of history on it, but anyway, research it, it's good. Looks like it might rain later on, so that's not good. But it's running! So if you're in this boat, there's a max speed of about two knots. <laughs> and anyway. just a little, little, um, FYI. A little handy hint, there's 30,000 crocodiles where we're swimming right now. Yeah. <laughs> 30,000, I'm leaving, goodbye! I think I felt one just touched my leg. <laughs> what? Nah, that may have been a bit of poo coming out. Because <laughs> mum is putting the jeebies up me. What's that? Alright. Lake Argyle. Woo!
our um, sunset cruise last time we were here that the rock wallabies come out for a little feed from the tour boats at about three o'clock. So we've just seen one of the t tour boats go past. So we thought we'd zip across. And sure enough, there's three. There's yeah, three. There, there's there, one there. facing one way and then there's one up in the corner. There's one oh, there is three, yeah. So just down on this little oh, lower ledge down here, one. there's two. Where? Where's the baby one? And then there's another one up the top. Oh, yeah. yeah, about there. Sort of blending into the rocks. Like waiting for food. Are you gonna eat food or are you gonna wait? I will choose the needle. Oh, there goes one Ooh. bouncing away. That's the baby one. That's the old gate. They're sitting there ready to have a feed. The one that gets them, so. We don't have any food for them, darling. They just sort of got fed by the Yeah, they just got they just got fed by the tour that just went past. Well, they're already gone. Good work, tour guide daddy. Precision engineering here, precision driving. <laughs> and the tour boat's already gone. Yeah, yeah the tour boat took off out that way. That We're hoping these storm clouds aren't going to make us go home early. Had first, had first rain of the seasoning here, season here last night. So we were witness of that. Not that we really wanted to rain whilst we're here. It's like a 10 minute downpour. Yeah, I think they said they got three mil of rain. They come in great, come in really hard and fast. It did, but it was alright. Cooled us all down. Kind of. <laughs> that was already cool enough. We're already cool. Crocodile. Crocodile? Baby, it's tiny. So here's one of the 30,000 crocodiles that we're swimming with. Just on the bank there. Yeah, that can't eat me. That's they tiny. just look fake, don't they? They're tiny. They go all the way. It's not even going to fit a toe in them. What am I trying? So that couldn't eat you, could it? Tiny. So we found Crocodile Cove. We followed the tour boat. <laughs> We're going to head over the banks over here. We might be able to find a few more. Yes, we've only got one crocodile. And those clouds are still chasing us. They're not good. No. Wow. It's interesting the way that the rocks form around here and there's like you can find some kind of little inlet type bits. We'll try to get in a little bit closer and see sort of what it looks like when you go in there but you can see the black in the rock where obviously the water flows down through here in the wet season. Some of the rocks are just formed like so cool. And there's ones that like it looks like there's a wave going through the rocks. It's just pretty awesome considering this whole dam was man-made. It means it was made by actual people. Like it wasn't wasn't like a ocean or a um, or a lake that was already here, they made it into a dam. So they made the big wall and they filled it, let it fill with water. How did they, how did they fill it? Well, they diverted all the um, rivers in the area around here to come into... The Ord River. The Ord River, yeah, to come into here where it was, where they'd blocked it off and it couldn't get back out again. And then it also helped from the rain. Exactly. And the help in the rain. Wet season. You can see the tide lines too up the wall. Yeah, you can too. The tides? Well, not tide lines, and like the, the depth markers, how high it's been at some stage. Well, here we are. Pardon my French, but we're at the damn wall. And uh, that's all it is. It doesn't look very big, but that's all it's holding all this water in. 60 odd k's wide, or however wide it is, massive amount of water and it's like 300 meter wall, 200 meter wall, it's crazy. Now and all the rocks that they used out of here, they only they quarried them just around the corner here, just off the edge. So pretty smart engineering, they're like, hey, let's use the rocks that are next door. But do they have to swim to get them all? Nah, they just... It wasn't filled with water then, It just didn't have water in it, so they just drove across, dug holes, 
put rocks up there. what it might be like to live on Lake Haga. Well, apparently these people over here did because they built this three bedroom home. It was built by a local builder in um, Katanara. Brought down here to the boat harbour in two bits and put onto some great big pontoons and they've been living here out on the lake ever since. Apparently it's got three bedrooms, four air conditioners, a massive television, all the luxuries of the house really and they just reside here on Lake Argyle apparently. Wouldn't be a bad life I reckon. Alright, so this is the other side of the dam wall and you can see the outlet here, it's called the Ord River Outlet Valves and um, yeah, that just uh, I think equalises and just allows the water to be coming out to head down the Ord River. So yeah, it's very interesting. I never even knew this side was here last time we come over, but yeah, so we drove across the top of the um, dam there and you just come down the hill a bit. Quite interesting. I think you can you can launch a boat from down there and go down there and have a bit of a fish or whatever. So, so much engineering goes into this stuff. It's incredible. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Good? Yeah, it's good. Come on, you gotta come in. Yeah! Go on, Dee, then you go. I'm going in. I'm an adult to go in first. Come on, go Look, on in. Ari and I together equal an adult. Ah. Equal is not an adult. <laughs> Ready? Let's go, Mum. Here go goes Mummy. Woo! Oh, my yeah. dressing is full. Nice. What did you do? Made my top fall off. <laughs> Like you didn't have your GoPro. Hello. Oh. Alrighty, so we are only a couple of days away from crossing over to the Northern Territory border. And as we all know, when you're traveling, you need to be super um, organized with your money and to save a little bit of money, you don't want to waste anything. So I just decided that, and I'm sure this has been done by many, but it was like a brainwave for me. <laughs> um, I had like a whole bag of potatoes, um, a few sweet potatoes, some lemons, limes, um, and carrots. 
and I thought we are not going to eat these, all of these in the next couple of days um, before we go into the antique. So I'm just peeling them, chopping them all up. Um, so I've chopped, like I'll just chop up, I'm going to peel all these potatoes, but I'll peel them, chop them all up just into like baked size. So you could do mashed potatoes still with that or whatever. Um, and just pop them in the freezer, ready to um, use when you want to use the next. And they're frozen and not fresh when you cross the border. So I've cut up whole heap of carrots as well. Um, and I'll do the same with the lemons and limes. Actually, in all honesty, the lemons and limes are always chopped up in the freezer for my gin, but <laughs> you know, you get the idea. <laughs> um, and that'll just get rid of a lot of the fruit and veg. I'm not sure about tomatoes. I've got heaps of cherry tomatoes, and I'm not really sure whether I can freeze them at all. So if anyone's got any ideas on that and what recipes you can use them for afterwards, um, let me know in the comments because um, we often have lots of tomatoes left over and I don't really know what to do with them. So yeah, so that'll be sweet and save money because we're keeping our veg and we'll have veggies when we get on the other side. So that's cool, I think. Alrighty, so along with my little potato peeler friend over here, <laughs> Um, we've, we've managed to peel all the potatoes, sweet potato, already chopped up to go. So we'll just pop it into snap lock bags. Um, I already got the carrots in the snap lock bag. Put those in big snap lock bags as well. And we'll be ready to cross the Northern Territory border. I'll just cut up my citrus as well, my um, lemons and limes. And we're good to go. So yeah, hope that's a helpful trend, trend, tip, <laughs> helpful tip. Um, and yeah, it just helps you um, save on either trying to eat all your fruit and veg before you go across or, um, you know, having it wasted. wasted if it gets thrown away. Too easy. Good job, Asta. I got the best spot in the house. <laughs> and it took us two days, we got here. Yep. So this corner is super busy late, all the time. Late sunset, but <laughs> yeah. it's kind of sunset views. Yeah. How's that? What a view. I don't really do that much justice on the GoPro, but... I think we were just down there on the river. Yeah. The river, the lake, not so long ago. It was awesome. In the boat. And now here we are relaxing in the infinity pool. Mm -hmm. Winning! Lake Argyle for the win. Yeah. I've said that about three times, but yeah, definitely come here. I mean, everyone recommends it, but it really is what yeah. everyone says it is. It's pretty cool. We'll go do a bit of a hike tomorrow, I think. There's a few hikes you can do around here as well. So we'll check that out. Yep. Something different. And that'll be us for Lake Argyle. Then we'll be shooting over to Northern Territory. <laughs> Mixed emotions about that. Yeah, leaving WA is a bit sad, isn't it? Yeah, but no. Hopefully they'll let us back in in about four six, months time yeah four to six months or whatever yeah. long until we get back here so yep. should be good hopefully or if we don't get back here it'll be uh, not a lap and a half it'll be three quarter lap <laughs> yeah, that's right we'll just have to Cutting change the up. heading yeah that's uh, true. anyway all good love it yeah now we're just gonna enjoy this yeah enjoy the view to the Northern Territory. Border. <laughs> I didn't know what I was trying to say then. To the Northern Territory border. We're just about to cross the Northern Territory border. Three posing for. <laughs> it's not All a right. photo. <laughs> what? Yeah. We'll get a photo in a sec. <laughs> <laughs> 